welcome to another Creative Zone and Dubai Business Woman Council webinar. This is part of our, our She Leads initiative that is an accelerator program that is looking to empower and accelerate 100 women-led startups and entrepreneurs. Uh, this afternoon, we have Tanya Leslie, uh, a good friend of Creative Zone for, for a few months now. We've done some work with Tanya in the past. Tanya is the founder of the Tanya Leslie Coaching. She specializes in building high-performance individuals and high-performance entrepreneur. She has a wealth of experience on, on issues to do with clarity, on, on these issues of, of how to build high-performance individuals and, and high-performance entrepreneurs. So today's session's, uh, session is entitled Gaining Control Post-Pandemic. Um, Tanya, on to you. Uh, it's a real pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for connecting. And maybe just for, for, for the clarity of, of our viewers today and the attendees, tell us a little bit about you, your background, and how you've come to, to get so involved in this topic. Thank you, Lorenzo. So thank you, Creative Zone and the Dubai Business Women's Council for hosting, for having me here. And definitely a shout out to, I posted this on LinkedIn, so to my um, colleagues in the UK, in Australia, definitely South Africa, the UAE, everyone that's uh, um, commented on. If you haven't, do put it in the chat so we can give you a shout out. Thank you for being here. So yes, as Lorenzo said, I am a personal development coach. I specialize in high performance. So this means that I help people to really articulate and distill what it is they want and then develop the skills that are required to help them achieve that. So this looks like, yeah, developing clarity and going about your day with purpose and intention. So your day in your life and in your business. And the skills definitely revolve around the high performance skills that we know are Yes, having clarity, but also having the energy. Okay, this does mean physically having the get up and go, but also that mental energy and the emotional energy that is really important for especially entrepreneurs, people who are self-motivating, okay, and relying on themselves to get up and go. This is also, yes, your confidence. So, yeah, in how you engage with people and how you carry yourself generally, but also in how you think because everything in life starts with our thoughts. You know, thoughts become words, words become um, action, actions become your habits. So developing confidence is really important. This then ties into another high performance habit. Now this is influence. And the thing that we see that is normally coupled with being a confident person, influence, you know, is your ability to move someone else and in business, this is critical. You can have the best product, the best service, the best offering in town. But if you, are, are, if you are not able to move someone to engage with that, okay, then who is your, what is your product? Who, who are you serving? Okay. The next is productivity. Okay. So not just doing the busy work in business, but being able to prioritize what it is the things that are going to move you and your business forward, the needle mover. So if you're looking at a dashboard in your car, the thing that takes you from zero to whoa, to go, the things that are actually going to progress you and not just the busy work. So the theme, as Lorenzo said, for this particular call is taking back your control. Now, I'm sure that we can all agree that the current environment is out of control, all right? We have the pandemic, we have politics, all the notifications lighting up every screen that we look at. We have fluctuations that result from many things in, in the markets, in just things that are changing and fluctuating, creating a lot of uncertainty, okay? So how do we create some certainty? How do we take back some control? Now, anyone that's done a bit of personal or professional development will be saying to me, Tanya, there is really no such thing as control, you know, the full control of something. And you were right. So what are the controllables? What can we control? We must control our controllables. And that is the theme for today's discussion, okay? So 
we only have one hour together. So let's make it an hour of absolute power and the format for today will be quite interactive. We'll have question and answer style discussion, all right? And so we have access to everyone on the call and some of you have willingly told us your names and where you're from. So I'm going to start picking someone to share some very private details about their life. Okay, we have Aisha, we have, a, I'm actually kidding. If you started to get a bit nervous or wondering what I was doing, you were with me, you're here in the room. Okay, and actually we've been quite prepared. We have um, had some amazing responses to a questionnaire that we put out before this call. And I'm going to give you a bit of an overview of what this questionnaire involved and the answers so that really you can start to get to know each other the people on this call, because sometimes, you know, we have that Zoom fatigue. We don't really know who's on the other end or who else is joining or the, or the kinds of experiences that they're going through that we might also be experiencing. So here we go. I'll give you a bit of a summary. So the questions in this questionnaire that was pre-prepared were high performance based questions. So as you know, you were listening, it was clarity getting influence, confidence, energy, and being productive. And so what this questionnaire did was help people rate themselves and evaluate how they felt about all of those things. And maybe from one being quite low to five being quite high. And there was a spread of different things. And then we had some free type sections where people shared their, their real goals in their own words, their, their real dreams, the their things they desire for themselves and in their business, because your business is an expression of you and how you show up in it. So this is why those questions are really important. And from a very juicy perspective, shared very wholeheartedly. I could tell by the way these, were, these responses were written and I read every single one. So thank you so much for being authentic in them was the sharing of the challenges, okay, the struggles. So let's give a little bit of an overview of some of these responses. So the wants and the goals, really to start and to scale business, right? It seems quite obvious, but then we have different levels that people are starting from. People who are going from employee, transitioning to entrepreneur, full scale, and people who are wanting to start their second and third businesses, which is pretty fantastic. You want to build a company, there's a strong desire to build your independence, okay, to create that professional success. Now, this also means a relationship success because remember, we're in the business of moving people to engage in our products and services to have meaning with us. So I found the respondents very well-rounded because they understood that they also needed relationship success and this was part of their goals, okay? So yes, professionally with prospects and um clients as well and maintaining those relationships and their colleagues if they've got a team okay but also personally with their with their loved ones with their with their partner with their family and kids we're spending more time at home so we've had more time for introspection to consider how things are going how do we want to connect with people and in coaching we've found the people who have those close to personal relationships those deep bonds, those deep connections are the people who then translate to a business side where they're able to better connect not only one-on-one -on -one, but move bigger audiences, okay, because they understand how relationships work, they understand how people work, they understand what people value and they connect with that. Now, the, the final main goal here was health and not just in the physical vibrancy but mental well-being okay and maintaining that or getting that okay and this then feeds into the emotional well-being as well because with this time to be more introspective maybe less time commuting more time working from home more still moments we start to check in with ourselves okay so moving on the challenges there were three main struggles that these entrepreneurs have and the first resounding one was a lack of productivity, being really distracted, okay? Feeling a lack of motivation. And this had big outcomes, really big outcomes because you know, productivity as, a, as an entrepreneur is, it's your lifeblood, it's the stuff that you create, that you put out into the world. 
for everyone to enjoy, to buy, to consume, right? Okay. So with a lack of productivity and not putting that out, people also felt then a lack of vision. They couldn't remember, you know, why they were doing it or they, you know, were reconsidering their path. Maybe I'm not doing the right thing. And then with a lack of the productivity is a lack of clarity about what to do next, which meant that people were kind of stuck in this paralysis of, kind of overthinking and not producing. And when we don't produce as creators, as entrepreneurs, as business people, as leaders, we don't have the outcome. And then our brain, being a very self-fulfilling organ, sees all the things that we haven't created, all the reasons why we won't create, and starts to feed the doubt which then leads into the second major struggle, which was fear. People really doubting themselves, okay? Forgetting what, all the things they've accomplished, everything that they've been through, comparing themselves to others. And we think that just because we've been in different stages of lockdown that we haven't seen people to then compare, no, we're comparing more. We're online. We're using social media more, reading the news more, getting, you know, all the information from all these different feeds and different platforms, more chances to compare to, but then being isolated in the sense of, and especially as an entrepreneur, with yourself, wow, they've really beat me to it. I'm late. Should I even bother? Can I do something that's better than them? Maybe not because they're already established. Maybe I'm, I'm not smart enough. Maybe I'm not, I can't do this. Can I do this? Am I worthy? This is all coming through in the responses. So all of that kind of feeds into what we really understand. It is imposter syndromes and all these things where, you know, I don't really belong here. I don't belong in this space. Maybe I should go back to my day job, okay? Maybe I can ask for my old job back. The third major struggle and linked to everything here was fatigue. So a lack of energy, exhaustion, right? And not just... Um, you know, kind of like the burnout from doing too much, but the emotional episodes that come from this. You know, we think that working from home could or should be easier. You don't have to, and you have to get dressed maybe on the top half and then, you know, have your notes beside you and you can just, but it's really difficult to sometimes see who you're speaking with. And as people, we need to read facial expressions, bodily expressions. And this, we are social creatures, okay? This reliance came from the day that we were born up till about three years old. We can kind of feed ourselves and pull a blanket over ourselves so we stay warm. We are reliant, we were, we were reliant on other people and that developed that social, that need to be engaged with other people. Okay, so mirror neurons then, with someone smiles, we reflect that smile, we, when it's online, it's harder to see those cues, harder to read people, harder to then close your prospects because you might not be able to hear their breathing or the way they sit back in their chair because they maybe are unsure about one of your value propositions and how that's going to, to connect with one, with one of their challenges in business, okay? So this energy then, you can see how that will feed back into reducing productivity Okay, because you're too tired to think, mañana, I'll do it tomorrow. Okay, that was another thing coming, I'll do it tomorrow. Um, it affects influence because the way you communicate isn't as sharp. You maybe lose some of your eloquence in communicating your points to the other person, potentially online. Okay, so there is good news here. And the good news is that they're common themes within the whole entire sample, with all those people. You are not alone and greater in the industry as a whole. Because as a coach, international coach, I've got clients all over the world. However, when we are alone, we tend to suffer in silence. And we think our brain, our ego makes us think that we are unique in our suffering. But you are not. So this is an, indus this is an industry condition of people at large. Okay. And I've got some bad, no bad news. There is never bad news with me, only more good news and that it is you can take back your control. You can step back into your power. You can create some certainty. Now, because I jibber jabber, I've had to prepare some notes for myself. Otherwise, um, I'll take you on a tangent. My university nickname, so my name's Tanya. 
Um, so short is tan or tan, depending on your accent, love them both, is tangent because I'll have a point and I'll take you away to a different point. So coming back. So this, the theme of this discussion is controlling your controllables. So what are those controllables? For the purpose of this one hour talk, we've got three key control keys that you can turn at any time that you choose. The first is the key of perspective, okay? You need to take your reference point from outside of you to inside of you. Now, I'm not saying to ignore what your customers or colleagues or prospects are saying. No, I'm not saying do business blind. I'm saying to bring your reference point to here. Create your own set of expectations, okay, about how you're going to engage with the world. And this means having clarity about your vision, your vision, your why for doing this in the first place, okay? Knowing your vision and really understanding and feeling, connecting with your why you're doing it can help pull you out of those moments where you're with your coffee and your mind's going spiraling with all the bad things that can happen, all the fear, all the doubt, okay? Because it gives you that sense of urgency to act, to move, okay? That motivation daily, okay? What does this look like? This means starting your day by determining your perspective, visualizing, seeing, okay, in the movie of your mind, not just your greater vision for business, but how you're going to conduct your day, okay? Because how many of you, be honest, I did this for a long time, sometimes I still do, use your phone as your alarm clock, okay? Your mobile phone, your smart device as your alarm clock. Some of you don't even have it on airplane mode or off because it won't even, the alarm won't go off if it's off, okay? So you pick up your phone, you see all your notifications, your emails, direct messages, you know, your WhatsApps, your um, Facebook, your Instagram, <laughs> stock updates, live feeds, maybe even your dating profiles. What do you do when you see all of that? Think, oh, I have to respond to all of them. You go straight into responder mode. You've started your day in response. Suddenly, okay, the day turns to dusk. It is dust. And you haven't done the things you haven't picked up, you haven't blocked out time for the needle movers, the things that are going to move your business forward, okay? So when you have vision, you can change your perspective. And I'm not saying don't respond to your emails, forget about the fires that are going on. No, um, do those things. Just make sure you carve out time for yourself and your vision so you know how your responses in business or in your relationships are actually moving you towards your goals. Now this feeds perfectly, okay, into the second main control key. So controlling your controllables, the theme is, is taking back control. We've talked about perspective. The second, I've made them all start with P for your convenience, is pace. Set your pace, control your rhythm. You don't have to wait for someone to do something or start something before you feel inspired. And if you've been with us for the last five minutes, you'll know that that inspiration, that motivation comes from your vision and knowing your why. Not just in business, it's something that you share with people, but for yourself and to move yourself in the day. So pace, what does this look like? Okay, how do you control the rhythm of your day? It's a bit like dancing. You dance from this call to that call, the music is your calendar. This means you control your time. Now, when I work with my clients, I say, <laughs> okay, Open up your calendar right now. Yeah. Huh? Open up my calendar. Yes, yeah, so the calendar opens. And I'm like, show me. Okay. You're a very driven person who's achieved a lot and is going places. You want to achieve one, two, three. That's why we agreed to work together because you want to go there faster. Show me where in your calendar you've got this. We can, I know you've got the clarity and vision. We can move on to the productivity piece. Where have you blocked out time? Okay, now if it's because you realized of the amazing sessions that have been in the last um, 10, 11 sessions you've had, 
that you need to empower your team, build a high performing team because everyone's dispersed globally, okay? And maybe unable to be in the one office together, okay? Or you've realized you need to activate a marketing campaign for yourself, which involves a social media strategy. Well, if you're activating a marketing campaign for yourself, which involves a social media, media strategy, having setting your pace means understanding from a productivity perspective, what you'll actually be doing in the time that you've blocked out. So I'll ask my client, in terms of your goals, okay, what are the next five steps you must take to make that goal a reality, to tick it off? So if you need that marketing campaign, what will be involved? And if you're by yourself, you maybe don't have the resources to outsource it just yet, okay, you need to keep it in-house with yourself. Have you seen those, um, those entrepreneur memes where they say, if you see me talking with myself, just leave me be. I'm having a staff meeting. <laughs> you're having a team meeting. So you're having a meeting with yourself, okay? Because you need to figure out what this big, wide world of marketing is. So your first step might be, okay, understand the marketing channels and how they mix in together. That'll be a block time. The second will be prioritizing and matching my product service offering to where my audience is on these particular platforms prioritizing great my third step will be creating content where's that blocked out my fourth step will be um turning this content um, from video into five different blog articles 11 different social media kind of quick snippets snap size content and my fifth thing will be planning for the next round of content those five things to bring your social media plan to life. What, where, where are they in your calendar? So do you see how by understanding your vision, taking control of your pace, setting the rhythm for your day, you start to take control of your business and your life. You don't need someone else to change outside to take control of these things. Now, this leads me to the third main control key, and that's perspective, sorry, Persistence, we started with perspective, we moved on to pace, now it's about persistence. Are you tenacious? Okay, are you consistent? Day in, day out, week in, week out. Or do you try once, twice, 10, 11 times and wonder why it hasn't worked yet? Or do you do it enough times, okay? For success then to crack open until by enough practice in developing these skills, you develop confidence. Then the way your cold email outreach sounds and reads to people is not from a scarcity, fear, you know, setting. It's from an empowered, confident setting, okay? And so when you are persistent, when you're tenacious, you're consistent, this means if you explained it to someone you're mentoring, they say, you know, how do you just keep going at it? You know, hungry, hungry, hungry. You are steadfast, okay? This means that even when the world is a stormy place, it's rocking your boat, you don't know when it will end, there is so much uncertainty, okay? You stay the course, you stay the course. And in the world of business, as a leader, as an entrepreneur, someone building something that means something, as an expression of yourself in the world, okay? Business is just your way of doing that. If, if anyone, it's you, it's these leaders, it's the entrepreneurs, it's the brands, it's the companies that are lighting the way for the rest of the world. Call them your audience. You are lighting the way for the audience. You are showing them how to cope with change, how to evolve, how you can help them, what they need to do. Like that is the leadership. Those are the companies that stay alive, <laughs> okay? They're the companies, like that's real influence there. And if you're an entrepreneur, it could be your personal brand. It means you're showing up, okay? Don't just shut the door on the little boat and wait till the storm's over, okay? You lead by example. So if you're productive, if you're walking a talk, this means creating. This means posting your content. 
Even if you think it's not perfect, you're showing up. You're putting it out there for people to experience. And that is the real perfection. Because then you start to get some engagement. Maybe one, two responses to emails, likes on your posts, whatever it is. Then people start asking you questions. You start tweaking bits and pieces. That is the process of perfection. Perfection is a process. And that comes from putting your creations, your creativity, your experience, your products, your services out there, okay? So I'm not saying it's easy. <laughs> you have to honor the struggle, okay? If you think about a, an Olympic athlete, a runner, okay, in the 200 meter sprint, you'll see the outside, you'll see this run, you'll see them do it in an, an amazing time, you see the winners take the stage, get their rewards. You see all of that and you think, I want that, I need to be that. But what do you not see? You don't see the preparation, the persistence, the perseverance, the push, the grit, the hard work, the injuries, the setbacks, the pain, okay? The struggles, the nourishment, okay, of their mind and bodies, the team behind the individual, okay? Their set of coaches for all different things. Could be strength and conditioning, could be food and nutrition, could be mindset. And as a business owner, now this is your business coach or a mentor to talk to. It's people like me who do life coaching, keep it all, help you stay on track. It's just like the boxer who has the coach kind of, or the tennis player, they look over at their coach like, yep, you can, you can do it. They help keep you steadfast, okay? So the best way to kind of explore this discussion, as I promised, will be through the, uh, a Q&A, a more engaged um, style of Zoom. Didn't want this to be like every other Zoom, you know, we have the Zoom fatigue. So remember, this is about taking con back your control, okay? Mastering your controllables, turning those keys. So Lorenzo, how do you think we should go about the, the questions? I mean, we know we have the ones prepared from the questionnaire. And I know we might have some come through now or I've surprised people by saying we're taking live questions. <laughs> Um, definitely. Well, I think now we can start encouraging uh, the attendees to start putting their questions. I know that you have the set of questions that you collected pre-conference, uh, pre-webinar. Mm -hmm. So maybe to let the flow start coming through, maybe start reading one or two of the ones that you already have, and mm -hmm. then people are going to start posting their questions on the Q&A. But now let's remind people, what kind of questions are we looking them to to send to us what are the areas that we are looking to sort of go deeper into mm -hmm. so this is about your taking back control of yourself as an entrepreneur so yes the things that are the self-motivation questions how do i change my mindset how do i motivate myself how do i influence people how do I change this process? What are some new habits? Kind of, this is what I'm doing now. Tanya, what do you think is missing? Or, or what, what new approach should I try? Or do you have a tool that will help me be more productive? Those kinds of questions are things that help you to create change, take action. Excellent. Maybe I, I'll put out one just to open a sort of line of thought. I'm sure many of of the attendees are thinking in this direction. Many of the people connected now, there are startups, they're entrepreneurs, they recently started their journeys. And one thing that is very common is that entrepreneurs, startups in general, especially during these times, they get disencouraged very fast. The moment that they see that the road starts getting a little bit difficult, you know, that the climb is starting to get a bit tough. And you just said something beautiful. You said, honor the struggle. Um, I want to hear you, you know, go deeper on this, but what is it that you normally do? How is it that you work with entrepreneurs when they need to work on this, on feeling that encouragement and not falling into this disencouragement as they go through their journey of, of an entrepreneur? Mm. So I think the first thing to recognize there is it's completely natural, it's completely human to, to feel discouraged, and to feel tired and to feel that fatigue. So what creates the difference between the people who then start to create some action 
and start to make some change versus people who kind of kind of stay a bit longer in the hurt. And entrepreneurship can be very lonely. It is, it is definitely a process of honoring the struggle. And I'm going to pick up what you said there. It's people understand, much like the Olympic athlete example, is that it takes a team. You don't have to do it by yourself. And this took me a long time. I mean, I was practicing myself as a lawyer before I transitioned into the world of marketing. Now, I took a very scary plunge. I left my secure job as a lawyer and I started my own business. And I then thought, okay, I want to be more creative. I want to be in marketing. It's a more creative expression for myself. <laughs> so how can I leverage this? Well, I've got these clients who are lawyers. So I've got these colleagues who are lawyers. I've got this marketing, this newfound marketing knowledge that I kind of taught myself for after over um, about a year. I would wake up at 4 a.m. and go to bed at midnight outside of my day job so I could start to understand marketing skills and make the transition easier for myself. So what I did there is to make these transitions and just to make any changes. And when I felt the fatigue, this was a long time over a year, I mean, I lost quite a lot of sleep, but I understood it was a season of work. And I honored that struggle. I knew it was coming. I knew I knew it wasn't a surprise. So along the way, I enlisted also the help of other people. Some I just read from books. I listened to audio, inspirational speeches, people who uh, knew what they were doing in a particular area. I want to learn about social media marketing. I want to learn about billboard advertising. I want to learn how to create an online strategy. I would read books. I would listen to people. I would enroll myself. I would reach out to people who have already done it and ask them for a coffee. I realized I didn't have to do it alone. Then when I could afford it, now I'm justified as not a solopreneur by myself, I got a coach, okay? But initially that no, it was one-on-one, -on -one, but initially it, it didn't start like that. I got my advice from reaching out to books, social media accounts, and I made sure that I also, it's really difficult when you first start out or when you're feeling the doubt where there's so much overwhelm, so many external opinions, different trends, different people, with different influences. I would curate my social media feeds and anyone I spoke to really, I became very aware of who was kind of taking my energy and who was giving me energy and who was inspiring me. So I curated my social media feed feeds to be the leaders, the inspirational businesses, brands, people, so I could continue learning. So yes, I honored the struggle, but I also surrounded myself with information and people that helped me push through the tough times, especially when I felt alone. My partner at the time didn't get it, okay? He was still a lawyer. He thought, you know, you should just stick with what you know. You know, parents say it's safer with the job, it's safer with the company. Well, have we seen it's not, <laughs> not necessarily just safe in your job because businesses change, things keep changing. So it was really important that I got clarity around what I wanted, my set of expectations, set my vision for myself, and then had the team around me, whether they were books, information, podcasts, audio, seminars, or actual people, and then eventually a coach. Good, good, good. Some great tips there, Tanya. Um, we're going to start getting some questions coming in. Do you want to read a couple from what you received? Mm. Yes. So... The first one, first off the rank, is from Yogita. Thank you very much, Yogita. Yogita asked, how can I be more consistent? Okay. And she also had a second part here was, how can I be like, worthy of what I want? And when I started thinking about Yogita's question, I came back to clarity. Now, consistency comes from, yes, having motivation, but to start you have to understand why you're doing it, okay? So it comes from clarity, intention, planning, prioritizing what you need to do, the needle movers, and staying the course, being that tenacious yogita, being tenacious, you know? And when you start to see results, okay, this creates motivation. It starts to inspire, you think, wow, I did that. 
people reach out to and say, you need an amazing post or great product or great service. I'm going to recommend you to my friend, Samantha. Okay. And that starts to be like, wow, you start to do more of those things. It becomes easier. So even those things start to generate more self-confidence. Okay. Maybe you develop more influence because you learn how to talk to people, but you just have to start. But if you're doing things that you don't enjoy, okay, or you haven't got the mind frame about why you're doing it and know that the hurt or the struggles are temporary, you're going to stop, okay? Especially if you're alone, if you're by yourself on this journey. If you're a solopreneur, you're just starting out new, okay? And um, I have um, a bit of a cheat sheet because... Nagita also, you know, submitted her answers. You know, she rated herself on her clarity, productivity, confidence, influence, energy, all of that, and also gave some more information. And so I could um, more tailor an answer about the worthiness because it's a very, a very personal journey and a very personal feeling with your self-worth. And so this is where I say, Nagita, it must come from you. Your self-worth has to come from you, not from others. So this is where you bring the reference point for your expectations from the outside to the inside, okay? So what is worthiness? Worthiness is really a belief. It's a self-belief, okay? And it's definitely something that's linked to your consistency and then seeing the results once you start doing it, saying it, doing the things that you know are going to move the needle, you start to see results, start to experience it. You start to feel good. Your energy changes. You start to feel a bit more worthy. Okay. Yeah. A little voice comes up and speaks. Oh, this feels good. I'm going to do more of it. Just start. It doesn't have to be a big, grandiose start. Just start smaller. Take those, the, the first half of the first step that you identified in the five next things you must do to move your particular goal forward. Just start. Good. We have a couple of good questions that people are sending out. One Ooh. of them is... What do you suggest for a pick me up after a setback? Ooh, yeah, okay, pick me up, love that. Okay, so setbacks happen all the time. Like people experience it at many levels. People who you think are already super successful and experienced experience setbacks. You just don't hear about them. It's not necessarily the stuff that goes up on social media. So the first thing to understand is that it's more common than any success. Okay, so in once you've acknowledged that, it's really important to get your thinking about the setback right. Do not take it personally, okay? Do not take it personally. But it is important to understand perhaps what triggered the setback. So don't repeat something that maybe was in your controllable space, okay? So what I love to do is schedule time to reflect and if I know I'm going to be a bit sad or angry I put a timer on it okay so I don't want to deny that the setback happened and live in a fake world where everyone's happy and skipping and everything's amazing okay and I want to reflect on that I want to understand because I want to self-evaluate learn and improve that for next time okay and I actually love it when a setback happens because it gives me an opportunity to prove to myself that I can do it because if things are easy, I'm not pushing myself. So amazing that you're having a setback. So first thing to I time myself. I'm going to schedule that time in, experience the setback. What happened? What were the scenarios? What could I control in that? How can I fix that next time? Yeah, it definitely wasn't you know, my, my fault and is it, I have to take blame. But I want to take ownership of how I acted in that. Okay, perfect. Now what's the pick me up? I start to plan how I would deal with that next time. So when this presents itself, not even an issue because I've already planned what I'm, how I'm going to address that, how I'm going to speak with that person, how I'm going to tweak the marketing campaign, how I'm going to change the spend on something, okay? And then it's really important to celebrate yourself. If that's difficult, Celebrate the fact that you even thought this through in a logical way and didn't get as stuck as you have before. You didn't spend a whole week or a whole month down on it. You spent a good hour understanding it and strategizing it and planning for it better next time, okay? And your pick-me-up, give yourself 
give yourself the love to choose something that you that you actually want to do, <laughs> not something that someone else tells you. If you want a facial, you get that facial. If you want a massage, you get that massage. If it's something else, get it. Experience it. Have it in, even have it in your diary, in your calendar, plan it in there. Mm. So if it's not now, you don't have time for it or you have to wait till that client money comes through before you can get it, that's okay. I'm going to experience something good that I've planned for at the end of the month and look forward to it. Good, good, good tips. Another good question here. Um, what tips can you give for becoming a better influencer when it comes to, you know, influencing the people around you in your business, your employees, your market audience? Yeah. Oh, I love, I love this question. Where do I start? Influence. Okay, let's start to break it down. Influence is about moving someone to do something, right? And it's a good thing. You're a good person. You have a good product or a good service, a good offering that you want to put out there and have people experience. So influence is about how you move them to do that, okay? And I found a few of the answers, a few of the responses in the question to be like, I want to influence people. I'm going to attract them. I'm going to be attracting them. Amazing, okay? But what are you kind of putting out there to attract them? What are you giving people to connect with you? Influence is about connection. So as much as your product or service or whatever offers, you know, uh, amplification of pleasure or a reduction of pain, people understand those things factually, it makes sense, but what makes them buy? What makes them engage with you? It's the, it's the, it's the movement, it's the story, it's the meaning. People look for meaning. Amazing book, Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl, psychologist and Holocaust survivor. So that, you know, people don't just search for a solution, you know, to reduce the pain or ampl amplify the pleasure. They're actually looking for meaning. Why are they doing that? What's the story? And story, okay, so that I mean tangent. For generations, history, we, we've etched on the walls, okay, um, the K walls, you'd see the hieroglyphics and stories, story, people connect with your story. So if you're wanting to um, move a prospect or um, a bit more cold, a, a, a market that's via your social media, it comes with understanding perhaps what their wants and needs are um, from a pleasure and pain perspective, but also their behavior and how they want to connect. And if you're unsure about that, just this is some simple kind of psychology books that you can read, you know, as an entrepreneur, always be learning, always be absorbing information, always be bettering yourself because you'll learn some more tips and tricks, more just tips on even tricks. Um, so connecting with that audience, connect and understanding what they need, how they communicate, and then moving them with meaning and story about why they should act. Another amazing book, Start With Why, Simon's Neck, okay? He also has a Start With Who book, which came um, after that. Um, I, I, I definitely read both of that. Excellent, excellent. Um, I have another good question here. It says, how can you stay focused while you're working from home nowadays? Mm, mm, mm. So is, that, is there any context around that? Will the person open up their mic and give more context? Uh, it's Alexandra. I don't know if Alexandra, you can mention something else here on the on the chat on the webinar chat but i guess she wants to know about you know nowadays uh due to corona everybody's working from home oh, yeah, yeah, how, yeah, yeah. how can you keep your focus while you're working from home okay so don't get to hear alexandra's voice that's fine um <laughs> lorenzo's voice is, was beautiful enough so working from home it's about having boundaries isn't it so we have maybe limited space but we need to establish boundaries. Now, this, this could look, depending on what's happening in your life, whether you've got kids, a partner, it's just one room, or you have a balcony, to kind of organise boundaries in time if you can't create the space. And it's saying um, if it's your partner and it's in a really loud voice on their calls and all the Zooms are back-to-back, -back, and it's about, you know, um, Mark, I've got this um, hour of power that I need to have because I've got this vision for my business and um, I'm a solopreneur and I've only got you really to bounce off. So um, I need you to help me. 
I need um, 60 minutes and not a minute less between 10 and 11, no calls from you, okay? Or you just listen in on mute. So sometimes these boundaries happen with conversations we have if they're an adult and if they're kids, okay? And maybe you have a partner with you. It's about getting that balance right with them. Okay, Mark, so you've got the kids between these times. I've got them these times. Perfect. Create some clarity for yourself for how you're going to run your day, okay? And if you're by yourself, I mean, it's having a conversation with the kids and empowering them to be engaged on some level. So you might have maybe then 20-minute pockets where you do what you need to do. You get that research done. You get that client call done. But as long as you're doing the needle movies, you potentially don't have to be busy, busy from 7 a.m. till 7 p.m. Because you know what you need to do that's going to make the difference. And if you have a team, send it out. <laughs> Empower someone else to prove to you that they can do that work for you, that they can earn potentially an extension on their contract, that they can earn that pay increase that they want next year, okay? Empower other people to help you with setting boundaries as well. I hope that helps. Excellent. Well, I'll let you read a few from your side. I know that you have a few good questions there. Well, yes, that... very good ones. Yeah. Okay, here we go. So we have an anonymous question. And it's, um, so if anyone wants to submit a question, they want to be an anonymous, just say, Lorenzo, make me anonymous. This is my question, okay. Um, the question is, how can I be a successful independent person? Now, because this um, person also submitted some amazing information about their self ratings and their goals and their challenges, I'm able to give more context to the answer here. So this person you know, wants to be successful, be independent. Um, and in terms of their goals they've had in there, now I want to get what my parents want, okay? And then as part of a distraction, the distraction was fighting in their relationship, okay? And also another flag for me was clarity was a three out of five. So that me medium clarity, okay? So for this person, I would say, if you're listening, thank you so much for submitting this. You are not alone, okay? You must define success for yourself. What does it mean to you? Sure, if your parents are really important to you as they should be, include that in here, but state it in your own terms, okay? What does it mean to you? Next, why is this particular goal important to you? And don't just say because it's important to someone else. <laughs> why is it important to you? Because remember, when you have that, you can start to create the feeling of, what, of that urgency to act and be motivated and stay the course when things get tough. Okay, not just hide from the person who you promised to do it for. <laughs> okay. Okay, so what does it look and feel like for you? So articulate that reference point in, from in here and state it in your own words. You must articulate it because, excuse me, um, one of my notifications um, for staying the course for myself came online. And this is what I do. I set notifications for myself that have my vision in there that have how I want to be in my relationships as trigger words at random times, like right now, uh, 152 in the UK, okay? But different times, I don't expect it. And I'll get it as part of curating my notifications. It's not all bad news and fast. But there's also things that will change my perspective. That's how I use technology to my advantage. Anyway, I digress. Back to here. So this question was, how can I be a successful independent person? My response is defining success for yourself, what it looks like to you, why it's important to you, okay? Um, because we know just like the market, just like politics, the externals always change. So if that's always changing, you'll always feel like you're striving but never arriving. You never get to tick off what you wanted because what you wanted was what someone else wanted and it was a trend or fashion or opinion and it changed, okay? So if you want to be successful and independent, you have to create it for yourself, not anchor and be dependent on other people, okay? So this goes for your relationship as well. 
So get clear, define what you want, why you want it, and the next things that you have to do and schedule them into your diary. Control your pace. I hope that helps. Excellent, excellent. Uh, maybe we can read one more. We have space for one more question, Tanya. Yes. Ooh la la, okay. How can I overcome the fear of undermining myself and my skills? Now, this person's also wanting to remain anonymous. Thank you very much for submitting this. And there've been a few others that are very similar wording to this. And so this person for context had about three out of five, the clarity, the distractions were the negative opinions of others, okay? And they said family and friends. And kind of this environment of opinions from the outside had her questioning herself on the inside. Can I do this? Now I have these goals, but can I do it? Okay, and then it created stress, <laughs> stress around this. But she's very excited to be on her journey and just start, okay? So I say, okay, please take back your control and your personal power. Get the perspective, change your perspective, set your pace, and also be tenacious about how you go about things. So really important here to protect your vision and protect yourself. I mean, I'm not saying that other people are bad. All I'm saying is in the early stages of an idea, in the early stages of starting something new, people aren't used to seeing you change and it makes them uncomfortable. What they want for you is to be successful. They're not bad people necessarily. And if they are, drop them. But anyway, they, don't, they just want you to be safe. And the way that they know you is safe in their mind is, you know, Lucy or Darren, I like them as they are. I love you, in fact. Don't change. I might lose you as a friend. And so this is you know, people's other fears start playing in. Okay, so especially in the early stages, protect your vision, protect your dreams. I would be choosing, being very deliberate about what I tell other people. Okay, I'd be selecting my network, my close five people. It's like a claw then. I'd be selecting my five people a mentor, maybe a coach, someone in industry, a bit, just books or podcasts of people that, you know, if I'm feeling a bit oh, anxious, I'm going to listen to them. I'm going to tell them specific things. And if you can't get away from them because that negative person is your partner, okay, in love or business, then just be selective about what you ask. Still engage with them. Don't just cut them off, right? <laughs> Unless you want to. Okay. So you might say, oh, you know, business partner, Tony. So we've got these uh, selection of five videos, which three should we post? What, like, what do you think? Kind of empower them to kind of engage, but don't say, you know, what do you think about how I'm talking in all these posts on all these videos? I don't like my voice. What do you think? You know, I've got this weird Australian accent. I don't know if people understand me, you know, and then you don't post anything because of their opinion and agreeing with you. <laughs> so remember the brain is a self-fulfilling organ. So if, you know, if I say red cars, red cars, lots of red cars around today, you're going to notice every single red car, okay? Or if you start to see more negative things, negative people, you start to talk about, you know, uh, talk about these negative feelings you're experiencing because you're wanting to mirror them and connect with them and suddenly the whole conversation starts to be quite negative. So if this is someone you really love, I'd start to say, oh, sorry, it was anonymous, family and friends, I'd be selective about who I tell and what I and what I tell them. And if I really want to improve the relationship with them, okay, and stop undermining myself and my skills, which was the question, you know, which comes from the fear of undermining myself and my skills, I just say, Mark, I love you. You are my partner. You are the only one I can trust with this. And I've noticed. You know, that conversation seems to go one way and I would love your help if we could do this. If we could do this, really inclusive language, I need your help. And then tell them how they can help you, how they empower them to empower you. Because remember, people don't necessarily know how you interpret things or they're just, this is just how they are. And they just talk like this all the time, but it might not suit you and your stage of business and you can't just fob them off because you love them. <laughs> So just change the conversation. You don't have to be the responder, remember, responding to things that come your way. Of the ones that you must engage with, 
I'd initiate, I'd be active. I've got a vision. This is what I really love you to help me with. What do you say? Mm. <laughs> and I'd change the game. Take control back. Excellent. I have one, one personal question, one last question from me. Is the issue of, of self-confidence. Self with how many entrepreneurs, business owners, successful people that you have worked with, do some of these successful people uh, battle with issues with self-confidence? Or is it for you to become successful, a successful business owner, you have to have a trait of being a very self-confident person? Well, first, yes, people do struggle with confidence. And I'll say it, even the most successful ones who are the, the highest echelon of echelons, okay, the highest points, because as an entrepreneur, as a leader, you identify a lot of yourself and your worth to how you express yourself in business. If something happens in the business and it goes down or a team, one of your team members betrays you or doesn't, you start to have that as a reflection of yourself and think, whoa, mm. maybe I, Maybe I did something wrong and it take takes a blow to your confidence or your, your creation. You're putting so much out there. People engage and some people are trolls and they don't like what you have to put out there. That's fine, but that can knock confidence as well because you might have been in a little bit more of a vulnerable position and it does knock you a little bit. So, yes, people do struggle with confidence all the time. It is a completely normal thing. It's just understanding where confidence comes from. And remember the things we can control. We can't control the trolls and nor do we want to, we've got better things to do, okay? So what is confidence then? Mm. Confidence is largely two things, okay? The, the things we can control. One, it's, a, no, I'm pointing there. One, it's a belief in yourself, a self-belief that I can figure anything out. Yes, I'm a business owner, I'm a leader, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm starting something new and I don't know everything, but I can figure it out. I've got Google. I've got at least one contact in the industry and if I don't, I'm going to make one, okay? I believe that I can figure it out too. It's a skill development. It's understanding I'm afraid to go on video because I don't know how to look at the camera. I don't know how to talk it out. Well... If you believe in your ability to figure it out and you've identified the skill that needs to be acquired, honed, mastered, you get on Google, you get on YouTube and you, how do you present on video? And you start to practice. Now in psychology, there's something called the competence confidence loop. So the more you gain competence in something and you practice that skill, hone it, master it, the more confidence you get. And then even the things that kind of got you down before and knocked you, they don't affect your confidence anymore because you've gained competence around how to deal with those things. Okay, maybe you don't even deal with them anymore because you realize, no, nope, not part of my vision. Slice that away. I'm going this way. Thank you very much. Excellent. Well, it's 6 p.m. We reached the end, uh, Tanya, for today. Just as a final thing, maybe can you share with, with the attendees, there is about 60 people connected. How is it that people can connect with you? What kind of work is it that you do on your one-on-one -on -one sessions? How many sessions are there? How do you work with uh, entrepreneurs? Yeah, so I'm a personal development coach specializing in high performance. Now, this is with individuals and with teams, so people in business, to really get the clarity about what they want, who they are, whether it is as the individual in a relationship, in the as an entrepreneur or in the team. And then what are the skills needed? What do they need to do? What are the habits they need to master and maintain in order to get that level of performance, that output, that creativity, that kind of thinking that makes them innovative, whatever their goals are, okay? So this is personal development coaching based on these skills. And there are a few ways. There's, there's my social media, there's my website. Probably the best place to go to is my website because then you have access to everything. So it's www.tanyaleslie, Tanya with a Y, L-E-S-L-E-Y.com. And you'll see hopefully some of my videos, links to social media there as well. Excellent. Well, we'll be sharing all your details with all the attendees and we'll be sending a little bit of a, a summary of today's session as well as the link to today's video. So thank you, Nadia, so much. Uh, Tanya, we can't uh, thank you enough for today's session. 
I think there was there was a lot of value and great tips uh, for 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 uh, for the attendees. Lovely. Thank you so much for having me, and thank you everyone for tuning in. Thank you so much, Tanya. Thank you to all the attendees. Thank you for being part of this session, and we'll see you in the in the next one next week. Thank yeah. you. Everybody. See you. Bye bye. Bye.